Hey, this is Pastor Rick. Welcome to Sharpen. Glad you're with us. This is our weekly devotional. Today we're going to look at imbalance. And I want to specifically focus on dreaming in a way that's imbalanced. And we last time we talked about how Jacob, well, really Caleb, was a model of someone who dreamed in a balanced way. And he said, let's go and take the promised land. Let's go and take over. Let's not, let's take possession of the land. He was, of course, the positive voice among people who were negative. The people around him were saying, we can't do it. And they were tempted to give up. And so the question for you is, are you a balanced dreamer? You know, a lot of times people, they, they have a problem with dreaming. That's their first problem. They don't have a dream. They don't have any specific goals or ambitions. Caleb, in our study last time, had a great vision and a great passion. And, and I think we read from the book of Numbers, chapter 13. If you remember verse 30, it said, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, and for we can and certainly, we can certainly do it, he says. Great text, great moment, great statement. The problem is, sometimes we're surrounded by people, though, who are not like this. They're not balanced. They their dreams are unrealistic. People thought Caleb was, unre was unrealistic because the people that they were going to go and you know, take the promised land from were stronger than them in their mind. And so they, they sort of kind of gave up before they started. And Caleb said, no, we're going to fight. So this is the guy who's balanced. He has a big dream, right? But he's balanced in it. He's not afraid. He's able to, to, make, to fight off his fears and do what he has to do to win. It's so easy to be intimidated. Well, I love Caleb. I love the example of, of a guy who dreamed big, but he was balanced enough to know he had to fight, balanced enough to know that he had to try, and balanced enough to know he had to go. The other people were ready to go back to Egypt. They were ready to go back to slavery. They were, they were giver-uppers. Don't be that way. I want to switch from this guy's life, though, and I want to turn to another guy named Achan. And it's in Joshua chapter 7. Now, what's important about this guy is this is a guy with a dream, too, but he's imbalanced. Now, his problem is this. He wants something he's not willing to wait for. And so he, he goes the wrong way to get at it and ends up in a place he doesn't want to be. It's kind of like people who sell drugs, right? You want to be an entrepreneur, but you, you're going about the wrong way. You, 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 know, you want to be slick and sly and manipulative. You know, why don't you use that to build a business and become amazing? So in Joshua chapter 7, here's this guy, and he basically goes to the battlefield and the Lord told them that when they go to fight uh, in the promised land, that the first battle, they were to take all the things captured in the first battle and donate it to, to God. It was their tithe, if you would allow that to be seen, seen that way. They, there was this first fruit. We're going to honor God first. We're going to go to battle, going to conquer the promised land. But the first battle in Jericho, all that belongs to God. Well, this guy, Achan, said, not me. Man, he decides to take something. And so God had this labeling for uh, the this, this, this stuff that was in Jericho. It, it was called accursed, which means this is dedicated to God. And if you take it, you know, you're taking a devoted thing. And it will bring a hardship in your life. Look at what he said. This is in Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. But the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Yeah, the... the, the, the the devoted things, King James says, are cursed, but the devoted thing means this was something that was dedicated to God, everything in the first battle. And the Bible says, Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them, so the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Now, understand, one guy has a dream to achieve, which is wonderful. One guy, he's in the fight, that's great, but his dream is a dream of compromise. He's willing to go to any length to get it. He doesn't matter who he, who, who he hurts. And what he does is he causes long-term grief, long-term grief and sorrow in a way that was never expected. And it's all because this guy lost his way. Are you like that? Are you willing to do anything to get to where you want to be? If you are, you're like Aiken. In the end, he lost everything. And then his family was killed. In the end, he was all lost because he went the wrong way. Be dream, but dream in a balanced way, like Caleb. Don't be like Achan. Let's pray. Father, give grace and wisdom, I pray. And I thank you for your hand upon this word. May we dream big, but dream with balance and humility. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Stay sharp. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.